Chicago Bulls have won their first ever NBA championship. Breaks inside. Well, got the snap. They go to Grant. The pack the pack and going for the win. There's Paxson for three. Paxson. Yeah! The Chicago Bulls have three straight NBA championships. When I lose uh, the sense of motivation and the sense of to prove something as a basketball player, uh, it's time for me to move away from the game of basketball. We're seeing the end of a terrific era here in the NBA. Lennox finally defeat the Chicago Bulls in a playoff series. Today, Michael Jordan at age 32 tries to accomplish what no one else truly has in team sports history. Number 45 is back. He's in the building, ready to go. And the season is over, my friend. The Magic winning. Michael Jordan returned. Most people thought that the Chicago Bulls were going to go ahead and get into at least the finals in the Eastern Conference. Tonight, the Chicago Bulls uncover their new look for the 1995-96 season. How tough is that climb back to title number four going to be? The Chicago Bulls entered the 1995-96 season a far different team from the one that exited the playoffs the year before. With Michael Jordan back for a full season, the Bulls' nucleus was restored. Michael and Scott have been leaders with this team over the 90s. But Michael early in the season said, well, this is still Scotty's team. I'm still figuring my way onto it. Hey, Scotty! I feel like the last couple seasons that, you know, we were still a team that were looked at as one of the better teams in the league, but not of a championship caliber team. From North Carolina, Edgar. Having Michael back on, we felt like that, you know, this was going to be our opportunity to go for it again. Get the tap right there, uh, running right this side. Use the pass. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. With Jordan and Pippen forming an incomparable core, the Bulls jumped out to their best start in history. Dennis Rodman brought a critical piece to the puzzle as the Bulls now boasted the game's most formidable trio. Carving out a vital presence, Rodman epitomized the meaning of team player. Uh, we had a good situation uh, for Dennis to come into. Uh, Michael and Scotty were here. Uh, he respected those players a, a tremendous amount. Uh, both of them said, hey, if you and Phil think it's the right thing to do. You got it, Dennis. You got it. That's enough, man. That's enough. But what's unique about this team is that in years past, teams generally have had to take some time to gel as a group. And this year, you've added Michael back to the mix, uh, Dennis Rodman as a starter, and they came together so quickly. But even with their star-studded nucleus, the Bulls would demonstrate all season long that winning was a total team effort. What drove us this year was a lot of the players on our team never experienced this type of winning, and not as rapidly as we did. Uh, from Randy Brown to Steve Kerr to Jed Bush, a lot of these guys have been on other teams that have never won. And the bench delivers again. So the motivation was even greater. Not just from the starting five, not just from Scottie Pippen, myself, Dennis Rodman, the guys who have experienced it before, but from the guys who were on the bench supporting and coming in and relieving us of menace. You know, they wanted it more than we did because they've never experienced anything like this in their life. Some had never experienced the full measure of Michael Jordan, but by the end of November, that too would change. I remember back the game in, uh, it was Vancouver. We should have lost the game. Uh, we were down. 12 points with six minutes to go. Michael just said, well, that's enough. I can't let this happen. And 
All alone, thinking about the shot, thinking about driving. Now drives down to the right side, goes up to the left hand. It's good. Oh, you know, it seems like whenever we're in a tight spot, Michael just turns up the Jets a little bit. 12 straight by Jordan. 12 straight. And everybody realized that this guy was back in his full force as, um, you know, the most dominant player in the game. In early December, the Bulls came home from a long but successful road trip. They continued to run on all cylinders and march through the month. They're styling right now. And they're just... The question is now, who can beat the Chicago Bulls team? It's not an individual. It's, it's, it's a team situation. And no one demonstrated that better than Jordan and Pippen. As they provided the team's anchor, they gave the rest of the league a lesson in winning. transition game uh, for all of Chicago's heroics winning came down to the basics it's pretty to have a shot or a dunk or you know a steal and a run up but really the things that provide you those things are the uh, nuts and bolts of basketball and that's hard teamwork now listen if I call a 10 defense match up and play 10 full court defense you're only as good as your weakest link 10 given points at uh, eight minutes gone the first quarter as the Bulls continue to pile up the victories, their success seemed to come at will. You know, we're just breezing along. But you always, in the back of your mind, you realize you get off to a good start. And we kept going. And the next thing you know, you know, it's all-star break, and, you know, we're just sitting out there by, by ourselves. The Bulls put the first half of the season to rest and went to all-star weekend in the best of spirits and well represented in San Antonio. But no member of the Bulls was happier to be there than Chicago's rejuvenated star. All right, Mike, are you having fun again? I'm having a great time. You know, I love being behind you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, watch up, hey, watch up. Playing in his sixth All-Star game, Scotty Pippen was a big contributor, but the spotlight belonged to Michael Jordan. Jack! Jack! Ah, right there, dog. Right there, three. Here we go, dog team. Four is here, which is Pippen. Three guys taking out, guys. Man back right here. Right there. Hey! Jordan scored 20 points and took home his second All-Star MVP award. Yet another reminder that he had reclaimed his status as the game's best player. As the second half of the season began, the Bulls' momentum continued. Amazingly, they seemed to be even stronger and more cohesive. And no matter what strategy the opposition designed, it was powerless against them. Everybody out there has got a great player. If I want to Tony, you come to help, stay in front of the guy. If we don't have to break, swing the ball. Final seconds of this first half. Jordan having trouble getting across. Good pressure. That's Pippen. It's on. This is a rock star team. This is a rock team. Yeah, everyone wants to follow them. The biggest show on earth. Oh, it's like the Beatles have have arrived on the scene. They are the best and the brightest in the NBA. It's electric here tonight as the Bulls. The most sought ticket in the last 10 years. This game. Oh, I want to see Superman. Oh, it! And Rodman. With the regular season winding down, the Bulls were closing in on the magic number of 70 wins and they remain the force of sheer intimidation. Come on, I'll give you a jump shot right now. I'll give you a jump shot, shoot it. Well, you don't want it. Go on the weak button hook, Scotty or Michael. 
Half guard, wing by the Half pick, start, half pick, start. Post him up, Phil. Get your back. That's all the men. That's all the men. In what had become a season of epic achievements, Jordan, Pittman, and Rodman were named to the NBA All Defensive Team. Tony Kukoc would win the Sixth Man Award, and Phil Jackson would become the winningest coach in team history and Coach of the Year. But the greatest glory lay in the team's accomplishment, a record-breaking 70 wins. Seventy-two and ten is an outstanding record, but seventy-two and ten don't mean a thing without a ring, and and that's pretty much been the focus of this team all year. Is we're we're here this year to win a championship. That's our ultimate goal. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the 1996 NBA playoffs. The Bulls were relaxed and confident as they took on Miami in round one, and once they got on their home court, they were simply invincible. On a drive, beat Davila, oh. dunks the ball. And no amount of Miami Heat could stop them. MJ between them all. Yes. He got every one of them. Yes. As frustrated as Miami felt in game one, it only got worse in game two. <laughs> Miami was desperate. We're going to try to eliminate some of the mistakes that we made in, in the game. You can't... Um, you can't make mistakes against a team like this because they're going to take advantage of them. Heading to Miami with a chance to sweep, the Bulls became even more focused. A bounce back to Michael, spins up a shot, score! <laughs> Energized by the home crowd, Alonzo Mourning caught fire and scored 30 points. But it would not be nearly enough. That's that's a great great Dennis Rodman on the finish. That's and the Bulls have been superb. Their sweep of Miami now behind them. The Bulls would face a far greater test. One that put them up against a familiar foe. After years of playoff dominance against the New York Knicks, Chicago finally met its match in the 1994 Eastern Conference semifinals. The Bulls were lost without Michael Jordan, who was attempting to master another sport. You know, when I was down in minor league baseball, I didn't feel as connected you know, because I wasn't playing and I knew that I could be a part of it. It's like a, you know, the bully of the neighborhood taking advantage of the, your kid brother when you know the big brother's not around. You had those feelings of, God, I know I could help that team. Let X finally defeat the Chicago Bulls in a playoff series. A much different Bulls team hosted the Knicks in this year's playoffs. And again, the rivalry produced an intriguing matchup. A lot of talk about this game, a lot of talk about how the two teams would come out offensively and defensively. It'll all be answered now. Harp, be ready, Harp. Lock and trail. Michael. Stolen by Harper. Nick showing tenacious defense in this first quarter. We got to move the ball. I want to have a split cut, which we send this guy early. This guy goes early. He goes ahead of the pass, either. Though the Knicks were persistent foes in the first two games, the Bulls maintain their resolve. Derek Harper looks for John Starks. Makes the move and it's stripped away. Out to Scotty. He's got Rodman and Michael. Scotty won't need anybody else. This place is going crazy. Unblemished through five in the playoffs. They go up 2 nothing in this best of seven series against the New York Knicks. But the Bulls went to New York without their brilliant sixth man, Tony Kukoc. He injured his back in practice and would be lost for the series. I was nervous uh, uh, first because I couldn't help, especially playing in New York is tough with all the rivalry in between Chicago and New York in the past. Without Ku coach, the Bulls ran into problems at Madison Square Garden in game three. With the two teams battling to a furious finish, Michael Jordan delivered mightily in the clutch. Jordan for three to tie it. He does! The Knicks and the Bulls are tied at 88 with 19 and 14 seconds remaining. They battled into overtime, and there, Patrick Ewing gave the Bulls their first brush with vulnerability. 
The Bulls are up by three. Ewing, what? They cut him to one. And pulls up, 15-foot jumper. He puts it in. And the Knicks go up by one. Chicago Bulls are beat for the first time in the playoffs. Stripped of their invincible aura, the Bulls would have to face the Knicks again in barely 24 hours. But Chicago was eager for the challenge. Even though we're the oldest team in the playoffs, I, I think that you know, we turn around really well without notice and make adjustments. Mike was very upbeat and kept saying, man, this, you know, we're fine. Y'all realize we're 2 one, man. We're not 2 and 2 Let's go ahead and play this thing, all right? Let's be ready to run, now. I like that. What time is it? Damn time! Boo! But an all too familiar obstacle stepped into Chicago's path and kept the Bulls from seizing the momentum. Scotty Pippen. Ewing shoots it at the foul line. Good, oh. a tough shot by Ewing right in the face of Scotty Pippen. New oh. York takes the lead and the Bulls take time. With the Knicks seemingly in command, the Bulls found an unlikely hero. Rodman open, drives it down the middle. Underneath Weddington, fadeaway shot. Bill Good, right shot. baseline. Bill Weddington has given Chicago the one point lead. It wasn't uh, said, let's look for Billy. I was throwing a spot and and going to a position where I'd be helpful to, to our offense. We all have a purpose and a role on this team, and everyone knows that their role is important, and at any time, they're gonna be called upon to perform. Bulls lead 3-1 in the series as they beat the Knicks here in the garden. As the series shifted back to Chicago for game five, the rejuvenated Bulls dominated and finally sent the Knicks home for the season. Jordan just looked over at Spike Lee and waved bye-bye. The Bulls are moving on to face the Orlando Magic. While Chicago's victory against the Knicks was hard fought, the young and supremely talented Orlando Magic sailed through their series against Atlanta. Now, they were itching to face the Bulls. Bring on Chicago is the champ here in Orlando. There's no pressure on us. We're, we're the underdogs going in. You know? yeah, we're playing against a team that 72 wins. Uh, uh, what do you call it? Unbeatable. So we're going in relaxing and ready to play. But for the first time all season, the Bulls were facing questions about their abilities. These were doubts they could ill afford as they prepared to meet the team that knocked them out of the playoffs the year before. I tell you, I want the ball in Michael's hand. And Jordan spinning his way against Anderson. Oh, I've always been known as, as, a, as a player who could finish off a team. But here I was in one of those moments, and yet I let the team down. It hasn't gotten much worse than this for the Chicago Bulls. We targeted Orlando all season as a team that we had to get by. We all knew that that was our biggest hurdle. And the Bulls season comes to an end. Here at the United Center tonight. No one took the loss harder than Michael Jordan. His late season return had come too late to transform the Bulls. But this season, they were an altogether different team. Now we can get a, a fair shake. Michael's been here. Uh, he's in basketball shape. Uh, we have Dennis now who can rebound. So um, let's get down for our crown. Let's make this thing happen from the beginning, babe. Let's go do it. What time is it? Game time! Woo! Well, this is the one that everybody's been waiting yeah. for. Oh, and yeah. you consider this to be the two best teams in the NBA. At the start of the series, the Magic played convincingly. But it soon became obvious just how much the Bulls had changed in a year. Hey, Michael on the run. MJ running, shovels, Pippen, jam for the right hand. The biggest fear for Orlando is getting this crowd involved and watch what the Bulls are doing right now with their aggressive defense, pushing the ball down the floor, getting after second shots, and just going right in the face of Orlando. The Bulls, 121, Orlando, 83. Chicago grabs a one-game lead, and the Magic suffered their worst playoff loss ever. 
give credit to the Bulls for playing a fantastic basketball game. Uh, that's probably as well as I've seen any team play in, uh, in a long, long time. The Bulls were surprised by the ease of their Game 1 victory and headed into Game 2 in high spirits. What time is it? 8.30. <laughs> the fun continued with a pregame salute that would bring down the house. You still set the standard for greatness, determination, and leadership. Congratulations, 1995-96 NBA Most Valuable Player. He was superb this year, and he hasn't stopped. Played every game, lifted his team whenever it counted, blended with his teammates when they were going good. He's been just superb. Inspired by Jordan's tribute and by their own spectacular play in game one, the Bulls were set for another Chicago night. But at first, their play could not match their desire. Got to do it defensively and on the glass. Good offense. Push it right back at him right from the start. Zemso Kukoc takes him into the lane as it's stripped. Shaw lead. Here's Anderson driving inside of Pippen. Left hand wrap around. has got it for the Magic. Orlando is belting the Bulls around much like the Bulls belted them around in game one. Trailing by as many as 18 points, the Bulls were suddenly in danger of giving up home court advantage. But 72 regular season wins had given them an unwavering faith in their ability and they would not panic. Most teams going into halftime down down 18 points would, would be like, oh, there's no way we can get back in this game. But Phil Jackson walks in and he says, uh, we got them right where we want them. We had a number of huge comebacks this year, and uh, we had a sort of quiet confidence that we knew we could get back into it. The Bulls try and get rolling here. Jordan. Oh, the dandy rebound from Dennis Rodman. Rodman looks for Scotty. What a great play, but it wouldn't go. Scotty tipped it. Tony Kukoc comes up with it. Bushy for three. Yes, sir! This place is going nuts. It's a six point magic lead now. Keep the momentum going. Keep the ball moving. Chicago's defense turns it around in the second half. Pimp right back to Michael for the jam. They are befuddling the Orlando Magic. It's all over. The Bulls win it. What a comeback yes. by the Bulls. In that game, it, it you could just kind of see it fizzle away. And then when we came out in game three, you saw it. It, it just wasn't there for them. It was like a hot air balloon with no air left in it. And the Bulls showed their deflated opponents no mercy. Guys like Michael and Scotty, you know, when there was blood in the water, they could smell it and they were ready for the kill. Now Jordan, pull up. 18 footers scored. Michael taps himself on the chest as if to say, gotta do it, man. You gotta do it. Finding redemption at last, Jordan and the Bulls won the final two games in Orlando, emphatically erasing the memory of last year's playoff nightmare. Ball game over and uh, the magic. Our history. The Bulls have swept the magic. A superb performance by the Chicago Bulls. We all were disappointed last year. We came back to redeem ourselves as a unit. We saw the challenge in front of us. And we stepped in front of it and we, we faced it and we conquered. So I think that's, you know, that's a great accomplishment. As the Bulls once again make it to the NBA Finals. From the United Center in Chicago, Illinois, welcome to the 1996 NBA Finals. Yes, one! Well, Seattle program, Lamb program, championship program. It's been two years, but now the NBA Finals return to Chicago. Thank you. Double. 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 23 plus 33 plus 91 equals four trophies. Never before have two teams with better records matched up at an NBA final. One, two, three. Go for four! We're sweeping! Four in a row! Nobody has these shirts right now, so we'll probably be gone by halftime. Okay, go to the next guy. Get out. Get, 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 get. <laughs> Coach Carl has had uh, three days to come up with a plan. You didn't have to tell him any, like, secrets, like, little things to get to him. That's why they're secrets. <laughs> the other player that comes in here now is Brokowski. Rick has been coming out there, munching it up. Dennis, you know that they'll send him specifically out for you. Dr. Crawford, Rick's giving your specialist, and him and Aggie. Gentlemen, 
It's up to the Sonics to convince the Bulls and the basketball public that they have come here as true foes, not mere foils. Anybody want to go over anything? Danny, Bennett? Go around. Go, go, go. And be proud of what oh, you've yeah. done. Now oh, go yeah. out there and be big. Go, 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 go that way, baby. Now stay still. Here we go. What's going on? The Sonics were determined to prove themselves worthy opponents and came out in full force. Skips over to Kemp out on the wing. Fires over Longley. Sean Kemp with an 18-footer. The Bulls had not played in over a week. And early on, their game was uncharacteristically shaky. We knew that Seattle was going to come in and try to steal either one or two on our home floor. And what you want to be is sharp and ready for that. And that was our greatest worry coming in. Harris! Harris! The Chicago Bulls, it has been a long layoff. 33! Right now, their hope is that they're going to get an offensive rebound or a long rebound or a loose ball or a steal. No turnovers, no rebounds. The poor shooting continues by Chicago. Rebound grab by Kemp. Outlet pass to Payton. Ahead to Johnson. Sneaks down the floor. To the glass. Lays it up and in. Sonics playing great basketball. All cylinders working right now. The Bulls. Rust is starting to set in. Block here. Everything coming up Sonics here in the early going. Let's go, Bulls! Urged on most of all by their own burning desire, the Bulls, as they had done all year, found a way to come back. Marking their first finals appearance, Ron Harper and Luke Longley carried much of the early load before turning over the spotlight to the ultimate clutch performer. Michael. Brilliant as always in the face of unyielding pressure, Michael Jordan once again turned the finals into his own personal stage. And his first field goal. And Jordan is being guarded by Wingate. Take it, Michael! Take it, Michael! Jordan! Yeah, yeah, Michael! Now Jordan is going against Payton. With Jordan and the Bulls applying the pressure, Seattle was about to self-destruct. Serious trouble. Stay right here. Flagrant. Flagrant. Two. Joe Crawford's going to go flagrant foul. I got a flagrant foul. It's a flagrant foul. We got two shots and possession. The conversation continues. And a technical control. Absolutely uncalled for situation. Come out here, Bob. Come on, come on, come on. No, we just talking to him. We just trying to let him know what they've been doing. That's not right. But he has a flagrant foul and then two technicals. We're going to just see a parade to the line. Now Chicago with a chance to open it up a bit here. Midway through the third quarter, the Sonics found themselves down by 11, in desperate need of inspiration. Be aggressive. Whatever you do, be aggressive. Don't be soft. Be aggressive. Chicago up seven, Kemp goes to work, turns on Longley, left hand's one up and in off the window. Shot Kemp. And don't give up on your shoot. Pass and knock it like the three shoot. Deadlift shrimp, hoist it a three-pointer. And the Sonics trail at 71-67. Oh, this does not look good. Ten-point lead. All of a sudden, we could match up on defense. Get back. Dunlop up the center of the floor, behind the back dribble in the flow, spots the seam, stops, pops to tie, he got it! And the game is tied at 75. Right now, I think Chicago's a little concerned. So what we're doing is this. We're taking Tony, we're standing him out here. Just when Tony Kukoc seemed like a forgotten man in the postseason, he re-emerged. They drop it in now to Kukoc, right side. Shrimp is there. Kukoc with a fourth as Kukoc fires three, carries it from the right-hand side. His jumper has been absent throughout the whole playoff. Tony Kukoc is feeling it. A potential four-point play. George Carl warned his team. Michael Jordan is going to take over. Well, right now, it's Tony Kukoc's 
taking over. Bolstered by 10 straight points from Kukoc, the Bulls now had an insurmountable lead. A steal by Harper. Can he control it? Does. Comes in. Left side. Biggest lead of the game. They're putting them out of their misery right now. And they were now ready to rest their case. MJ off the dribble. Michael crosses over. Michael falls, fires, oh! <laughs> Michael a rainbow. Well, so much for the nine-day layoff and the concerns of Phil Jackson and the Chicago Bulls. Three on the shot clock. Here comes Michael, puts it on the floor, pull up 16-footer. Put two more down for the King. He is the man. Game one belongs to the Bulls. 90. Looking ahead to game two, the Bulls were determined to maintain their momentum. You're sure shooting rocks at the beginning of the game except for Kim. Hey man, make it two in a row. Get off a good court. start. Let's go, fellas. Gentlemen, early's and chases are all there. They are. Come on, gentlemen. Oh, Relax and everything's gonna work out great. Pulls the trigger. No good. Offensive attack by Johnson. No good. From the Still opening alive. tap, it was obvious that these were not the same Sonics Chicago had seen in game one. I will tell you, it is clear now that the Sonics are showing up with desire. But for every basket the Sonics made, the Bulls answered right back. See the mindset of Hersey Hawkins going to attack the rim every chance he gets. But the Sonics had to contend with a determined Michael Jordan, who scored 16 first half points. Jordan is feeling it. That is man. Michael has his game face on, as always. If Michael gets to the post, I'm going to double him. We still got goals on Michael Jordan. Every time he touches it, you're going after him. And time comes Jordan. It's inside the arc at the top, deflected beautifully by Askew. Payton's loose, open basket, jams it home. Blocked by Perkins, hands to Harper, rejected by Kemp. Sonics hanging tough. Steve, turn around and leave. We've got 11 turnovers, guys. We're not moving the ball. We're not ready to pass the ball. We're not making sound quite out there. But it was the Sonics who finished the first half strong. Having cut the lead to one, the game was up for grabs. That was until Dennis Rodman single-handedly ignited the Bulls in the third quarter. again and George Carl is taking time out. Well, you can't let them have three or four minutes of where we freak out. We make the play. Yeah. Seattle crumbling under the building pressure right now in Chicago. Taking his cue from Rodman, Tony Kukoc sparked a 10-1 run, scoring eight of the 10 points. Brown said to the Kukoc, he fires it on the three, he's got it! Special K, burns him for six points, and it's 72-65. Now they hound the ball, they steal it. Pippen's got it, right away from there. Oh, listen to the crowd, the ball's on fire again. Perkins, air ball. What did they do against the Chicago defense? trying to rally the troops right now. They trail it 76 to 65. Win or lose, we're taking something in that locker room and believing each other in this huddle. You gotta believe that, guys. You fought too hard. Every one of you, grab each other and trust each other. Don't do anything except fight, fight, fight. The gritty Sonics fought back valiantly. In the fourth quarter, they sliced what had been an 11-point Bulls lead down to three. Score it, and he's fouled by Kerr. Skips to shot in the corner, deep. Takes Longley into the paint, turns the corner, lays it up, and in with a right hand, he is fouled. 
Sean Kemp one on one blows by Longley. But with time running out, the Bulls still held the lead, and Pippen held the game in his hands. We got two shots. So the situation, eight and nine tenths seconds remaining. Three point Chicago lead. As you mentioned, Matt, no timeouts for Seattle. So the Bulls get back to the Seattle front court. It's Pippen misses on both Rodman. Come on, Dennis. Oh, what you get off the line? Step plus. The toss, the tap. Pippen off, knock free. Shrimp, and there's a foul. Well, Pippen missed two. Now Robin missing. Only three and seven tenths seconds to go in the fourth. And the Chicago Bulls escape from the victory. The Bulls over the Sonics, 92 to 88. Held court. Can you guys hold court three straight? That's what it comes down to. We're gonna have to go back in our building and uh, take care of business. Uh, but also backs against the walls at this point. They're filing in here at Kia Arena, a standing room only crowd to cheer their Sonics on. We're at home. It's gonna be rock and roll. It's gonna be loud. It's gonna be crazy. Fingers and flags. Gotta get one. Gotta get one. Gotta get one now. Sonics. They feel more energized here at home. I think they're confident here at home. The Supersonics hope that the energy, the hometown crowd, all of that translates into a victory. Only two teams in the history of the NBA have been able to come back from an 0-2 deficit. You know, they got more things to worry about. They got people patting them on the back. They got a safe face on their home court. They're down 2-0. They really had all the pressure. Seattle's got to have a great start today to give these fans some hope and keep them cheering. We're on our home court. We're running all night long. We're running. I think that Seattle maybe uh, felt like that the home court advantage was going to do it for them in that third game, and, uh, and we got off to a tremendous start. Tony Kukoc, again playing a key role, started in place of the injured Ron Harper, and the Bulls came out firing. Well, Chicago looked sluggish and slow of foot in game two. Much, much quicker here to start game three. Chicago's early onslaught drained the life out of the Sonics. Another bad pass. The sloppy play by Seattle continues. Could be a long afternoon for George Carl's crew unless they can handle the basketball. The Bulls had come to Seattle with killer eyes, but it was their flawless execution that brought the crowd to an eerie silence. This is supposed to be the noisiest crowd in the NBA. The strong survive, and you use their fans as your fuel. You use their emotion as your emotion. Peyton baseline double teams. Jump pass right to Michaels. The steal by Jordan leading to the breakaway by Pippen. Oh, the Bulls are just eating up the Sonics in this opening quarter with a minute 35 remaining. It's the Bulls 32 and the Sonics 12. Sonics trying to put together field goals and start something here in the second 12 minutes. Hawkins, three on one. Payton to Perkins. It's the go. And that gets the crowd going. Sean, they five and go to the rim, okay? Offense. Seattle tried desperately to mount a comeback, but the Bulls countered with a one-man explosion that was enough to lower the Sonics' boom. Don't be afraid to throw number 23. He's all right. Jordan. Yes. Oh, yeah, Mike. Defense. Defense. Where's Michael? Where is he? Doesn't see him. Back to Kukos. Six. There's Michael. Following 15. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. Good again. Michael Jordan is in another time, in another space, on another plateau. The Bulls by 18. Michael wants to make a statement. He's making it over and over again. Jordan's teammates took up the cause. Scotty with a dribble. Hard drive by Detlef running in off the yes! back. Got it. Well, a symbolic finisher to a first half that has been just splendid for the Chicago Bulls. But as the second half began, Seattle's defense 
clamp down on Chicago. Keep the pressure on them. Everybody rebound and get in their chest a little bit. And again, the Sonics very aggressive defensively. They are jumping on the ball. And the Bulls now appear to be the team that is rattled. You guys aren't ready for this garage down there. We got to get your feet underneath you, Luke. Coming off five points to the half down the with five seconds, he traveled on the pass. The Sonics take it back on another bull turnover. Stay in the game, gentlemen. Stay in the game and see if they get tired in the third and fourth quarter. Keep working your way back with your defense. They did just that, and we're now within striking distance. They have cut that 24-point lead in half, 73-61. Hope is still alive at the key arena. But the Bulls kept their poise. They also displayed some great defense of their own. A steal by Pippen. Kuko chased by Perkins. And look at the fans head to the action. The Sonics were now utterly frustrated as the Bulls continued to control every phase of the game. Come on, Luke. Not to be outdone by Chicago's usual offensive heroes, Luke Longley stepped up and added some luster of his own. Here's Longley getting inside. Nice ball by Luke Longley. Seattle rushed the ball. I put a lot of pressure on the ball handlers when I get good looks. I wish basketball were that simple, and, and sometimes it is. Yeah, from down under. I'll tell you what. What a game for Luke Longley. Longley with a playoff career high of 19 points. This is the night the Chicago Bulls could sweep away Seattle. For Bulls fans, this night held the promise of immortality. Sweep! Sweep time! Bulls and four! It's a four! I think it's, it's going to be a tough task. I'm more relaxed now than I've ever been. You know, uh, maybe the 3-0 lead makes you a little bit more relaxed. Look, it's Trina Pippen house, y'all. <laughs> this crowd's going to bring it up. They're going to be loose. They're going to be freewheeling. They're going to have everything going for them. you got to match that intensity early on. But the fans who had been stunned into silence in Game 3 saw the real Sonics finally emerge. Show what we are, guys. Just go out there and play we're together. We're 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 Great pass, Peyton Cook, and he stretches it home. A circus shot by Sean Kemp. For the first time in the finals, the Sonics played like a team that had won 64 regular season games. But the Bulls had suddenly turned into mere mortals, victims of a Seattle team that had finally taken charge. Put it down, Sam the man! Are you getting the idea? It's Seattle's night. Turn, wheel, over, and slam, over, Roger. The Seattle Sonics will not be swept. Sure, we want to win game five, but we still feel pretty good about ourselves right now. We're up 3 1, and. Uh, and we, we feel like we're in great shape. Just put this down as a bad game and look forward to Friday. Chicago was still supremely confident. You just got to go out here and win this Thanks, game, man. Let's go and prolong it even longer. Let's, Let's go. go play hard. Good 48, fella. Let's go. And they came out strong. Michael Jordan on the breakaway. So did the Sonics. The two teams were locked in battle until Sonic defense overwhelmed the Bulls. Defending hard on every possession, making a pass is difficult. For the second game in a row, the Bulls were unable to shake free from Seattle's defense. I think they're tired, gentlemen. I think they're tired. The Sonics, though, were sharp and quick. Instead of searching, 
The Chicago Bulls now will go home and start searching for answers. Destiny had a date with the Chicago Bulls, but now it flirts with the Seattle Sonics. We didn't think we'd be back here, but we are. Now the Bulls' place alongside NBA legends doesn't seem like such a burning question. The only thing burning is the Bulls' 3-0 lead, suddenly down to 3-2. Understand game four and five, what got us success. You played together and stayed together to the point that Chicago was becoming the team that was breaking apart. Well, the champagne is still ready, guys, and it's maybe the coldest champagne in the history of sports. We were talking about the Bulls as a team for the ages. Now in Chicago, they're questioning, are the Bulls aging? Who would have thought that we would look at Michael Jordan and see what we think is a fatigued Michael Jordan? Somebody is daring to pull on Superman's cape, and that somebody has been Gary Payton. So, is tonight the night Chicago celebrates? Or does Seattle push them to the brink? Have some fun out there, gentlemen. And you have fun by passing the basketball and playing your style up and down the Sonics. The Sonics were confident, but all season the Bulls managed to find the best in themselves when they needed it most. They possessed a resolve that had been forged by 72 victories. This game would be a testament to their epic season. This is the kind of start Chicago was looking for. And fittingly, the three players who had led them throughout the season would put to rest any doubts. This team has overcome everything. I mean, a lot of teams cannot handle the pressure of have to go out there and do what people expect you to do. And uh, that's what this team is all about. This team won't let anything get in its way. The Bulls dominating. The Bulls jumped out to an early lead and never relinquished it. Inside Michael Guard! Oh my, what a pass! To be a part of what has happened and, and to have gone through this whole season with all these guys, with, you know, uh, Scotty and Michael and Dennis, you know, what a huge thrill. I, I still can't believe sometimes that, that I've been lucky enough to, to be a part of it. Curry guns the three for the right oh, side. Good. Stevie Kerr up over Perkins. And it almost brought rain here in the United Center. The Bulls threatening to blow this game six open. As they had all year, everyone on the Bulls played their parts to perfection. It's very special, really, because of a lot of guys who haven't been in this situation and to, to, to be a part of them. And just I have the opportunity to see that reaction of them being here for the first time. I think they're absolutely one of the greatest. Either. They've delivered all year long. As they crowned their extraordinary journey, the Bulls showed the basketball world the essence of what made them special. It's been everything you could ask for out of a basketball season, from the winning to the teammates. I've had so much fun this year. Um, I don't want it to end. Bulls by 16 of the As the Bulls took their final steps toward history, the true measure of their greatness lay in the inspiration they drew from one another. Leading the three on two as they spread the floor, Pippen for one. Bulls are closing in now on that championship. The crowd is up. The celebration is underway in the United Center. I mean, there's a lot of sweat and there's been a lot of injuries this year and you play through them because it's fun and it's enjoyable to be out there with the 12 guys on the, on the floor and you're sharing something. I'm very proud of them and I think that the fact that they have found a way to work together and enjoy each other's presence and touching each person's life in their own uh, very inimitable way is, I think, um, terrific. Every kid had his one big dream, I think. And I can recall growing up 
talking about NBA championship, playing on the NBA championship team. Your 72 wins, an NBA record, and this championship placed the Chicago Bulls among the story teams in NBA and sports history. Winning is, is everybody's ambition on this team. Every player that, that's a part of this roster is willing to sacrifice to accomplish just one common goal, which is to win a championship. I actually feel like we just took a two-year hiatus and now we're back again. How do you describe what it means to someone to achieve their ultimate goal in their profession? I mean, this is the type of goal that you're almost scared to set for yourself. Watch out, here comes Phil. Watch out! This is the top. Can't go further than this. Number one. Number one. Yeah! My wife? Oh no, I'm sorry. I got, I got it. It's just wife. A unique team has fulfilled its destiny, and the transcendent team sport athlete of our time has added to his legend. It's been a long road. You know, it started from scratch. You know, I had a lot of support from my teammates, from my family. I'm just happy for the city of Chicago. I'm sorry I was out for 18 months, but I'm happy I'm back. Bring a championship back to Chicago.